June 2004, and the world's biggest airliner is on schedule, but only just. Two weeks into the structural assembly, it's vital to keep momentum going if the plane is to fly on time. Head of the program, Charles Champion, admit the schedule is tight. It's, it's going fast. It's going fast. It's like a race, it's like a marathon, but like any marathon, it's easy at the beginning and then it starts to be more difficult and I think we are starting to reach that point now. So the question is to manage your energy in order to be able to, to deliver the project. Next, they have to attach the vast British-built wings, but some unscheduled adjustments are needed on the fittings for the joint. As with any prototype, teething troubles are inevitable and project leader Eddie Davis has to respond quickly to these daily challenges. It, it can happen with new aircraft. This is a last minute job that we've had to come up today. Um, we didn't know that the, the fittings weren't to the, the, the right standard. So now the guys are reworking them. The huge components are 119 feet long and weigh over 40 tons each. Designing them has been an amazingly complex process. To get them this far has already taken over seven years of work. One of the earliest challenges was to minimize something generated by all large aircraft, a potentially lethal, invisible phenomenon called wake turbulence. All planes create spinning pockets of air as they pass. These unseen whirlwinds can cause havoc for planes flying close behind. Wake turbulence is most dangerous in the crowded skies near an airport, and planes are kept at least two minutes apart to reduce the danger. The bigger the plane, the more powerful and deadly the wake can be. The massive A380 could bring airports to a standstill. A detailed research program was carried out in this French aerodynamics lab. A precise scale model of the A380 was accelerated along an overhead track and launched into the air. At the far side of the hall, is a mountain of finely chopped K-pop foam, designed to give the sophisticated model a soft landing. A curtain of smoke, scanned by a laser, shows the effect of the plane as it passes. This is the normally invisible turbulence. From video recordings, the researchers were able to study how it starts at the wingtip and grows rapidly into tightly constrained regions of spinning air. Full size, these vortices can have the power to flip a following aircraft upside down. After each test, the model was dug out of the foam, cleaned off and prepared for the next run. The data gathered here, combined with results from wind tunnel tests and computer modeling, gave the designers the clues they needed to tackle the problem. Their solution is a wing design featuring these distinctive flared wingtips. As a result, the massive A380 should produce no more turbulence than any other large airliner. None of this will matter though, if the wings are not perfectly positioned when attached to the body of the plane. Time may be tight, but this operation cannot be rushed. This is the point where we'll slowly align the wing with the fuselage and then adjust the angle for the best aerodynamic performance. The efficiency of the plane really depends on us getting this right, certainly, you know, without a doubt. Again, the laser positioning system ensures the wing is in the right place and at the right angle. 
But after a whole day of careful work, a problem appears. Some large bolts have been left attached to the wing. We must uh, remove this one for, for finish the junction of the, of the wing. A quick phone call to check that it's okay, and they're swiftly removed to allow the build to carry on. A couple of miles away, at the immaculately manicured Airbus headquarters, John Leahy is conducting his guided tour for Qantas. They have arrived at the Airbus showroom, a vast facility full of cabin demonstrators of each type of Airbus plane. Okay, now I think we've got just about everybody. Okay, now Rod. Though it's all smiles, this is deadly serious. The Qantas top brass will soon get their first sight of a realistic A380 interior. If they don't like it, there'll be trouble ahead. Jeff Dixon, head of the Australian airline, is a tough-talking, no-nonsense businessman. Just the type of customer that Airbus must satisfy if the machine is to be a success. But to begin with, he doesn't look too excited. Notice the uh, headroom. This is coming out from standard size. We've got to deliver. We made the promises, and now we have to deliver on those promises. And how do you know if you're really delivering? You look to the airlines, to the customer. He's got to say yes. Here's the premium economy concept. John presses on with the walkabout, and then, almost in a whisper, Jeff reveals his true feelings. Space uh, that you've got. And that's the way the, the liners are. Oh, it's fa fabulous. Uh, better than we expected when we ordered, but uh, we did expect a lot, so yeah, right up to expectations. Watch this. Although the colors and layout will change for Jeff Dixon's planes, this mock-up represents one hard reality. Billions of pounds already spent on an Airbus that has yet to leave the ground. It's now mid-June, and as the pressure builds to create the biggest passenger plane ever, there's zero time to waste. This is the horizontal tailplane. With a span of 105 feet, it's as big as the wings of a small airliner. Made of carbon fiber in south and central Spain, it's easily the biggest tailplane ever made. The tail fin is another carbon fiber monster. 46 feet high, this component is made near Hamburg in Germany. When installed, it will stand as high as an eight-story building. Airports will have to buy new cranes to service it. Carefully it's craned into place and attached with 24 titanium bolts. Charles Champion, head of the program, comes to check on progress. Gilles Cormier, the guy who runs this station, has bad news for the boss. We've got a problem with this, the tail cone. It's six millimeters out of tolerance, side to side. Uh, it's not good, not good. The last piece of fuselage, the Spanish-built tail cone, is out of line. Six millimeters overall? No, from side to side. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a more serious problem and will take three days to sort out. Time they really don't have. I think it's, uh, it's, one, of, it's one of those phases when, uh, where the success of the project is at reach, but uh, you have many elements uh, to tackle in parallel in order to make it happen. So uh, you. you're under control, but uh, you've got to work uh, fast on uh, several parallel subjects uh, in order to be able uh, to deliver the project at the end.